All right, so here we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x of the equation, the sine of pi x plus the cosine of pi y all to the second power is equal to two. So in a, an equation like this, we're going to have to apply the technique of implicit differentiation. And that's because we don't have y written in terms of x. So in other words, we call that, we say we don't have y written explicitly in terms of x, meaning that you just don't have like y by itself on one side and all the x terms on the other side. Um, some equations you just can't do that. And when you can't just do that, we apply on what's called implicit differentiation. Now implicit differentiation really um, uses the chain rule frequently. So make sure you're very um, competent with it. So here it is again, but also of course, know all the other um, differentiation rules like the power rule, quotient rule, or power rule, product rule and quotient rule. So let's go through this. So um, when we're taking the derivative of an um, implicit equation, so something like this, I really emphasize um, trying to um, make it clear what the inside functions are, because you're usually going to have multiple functions in the equation. And especially with trig functions, emphasize the input. So I like to really use parentheses a lot, because textbooks usually don't have that um, written don't have trick functions written with these parentheses. Um, so in a textbook, it was written just like this. Anyway, so let me show you what I mean. So I would, re I would rewrite this as the outermost function is the, is the squared function. So I'm going to put that in black. So, so equal to, all that is squared, equal to 2. And actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. equal to two. And then with the inside of that, I have the sine function and the cosine function. I'm gonna put those in red. So I have the sine of something plus the cosine of something. And then within each of those functions, I have the pi x function and the pi y function. So I'm gonna put those in blue. So I actually have three functions going on. I have the power function, these trig functions, and then the the, the blue functions, the pi times x and the pi y function, so linear functions. So when we differentiate, let's first take the derivative of the out, outermost function, the power function. So the derivative of the power function, let's make it to the second power. We use the, co, the, the power as the coefficient. So we have two times, and I'm gonna leave everything else on the inside the same. So so two times the sine of pi x plus the cosine of pi y. And all of that is to the first power, or I can just write it, or you don't have to write anything. Um, now that will ne ne next will then be, need to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside function in red. So, and let me actually put that, let me actually do this too. Put that. Put a double parentheses. I'm going to put do those do those together. So um, the derivative of the sine of pi x, the derivative of the sine of 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 function, the derivative of the sine function is just the cosine function. So that'll be times the cosine of pi x All right, something going on with this uh, clarity. Give me a second to adjust it. All right, there we go. All right, then this times the derivative using chain rule times the derivative of pi x. So that'll be just times pi. The derivative of pi x is just pi. Now, still keeping all this within the red group, I'm going to add that to the derivative of the cosine function. So going across this line, so plus. The derivative of the cosine function, which will be the negative sine function, so negative sine of pi y. And then I multiply this term by the derivative of pi y, which, which will again be pi, so that times pi. But then since um, I'm differentiating a term of y, with y, 
a y term, I'm going to need to multiply this by the dy dx. So all, this will be multiplied by dy over dx. And all of that will be in the red. And that will just be equal to the derivative of 2, which will be 0. So all of that will be equal to 0. Now, pretty much the calculus part is done. Um, the rest is really just algebra. You're solving for dy dx. So um, what's going to happen next is I'm going to divide each side by this. So I'm going to have 0 divided by that. And that'll just be zero. Well, let me write it out just so it's more clear. And and um, let's, let me start off by writing the red. So I'm gonna have pi times the cosine of pi x minus the, minus pi times the sine of pi y Oops, minus pi. Times the sine of pi y. And all of that is still multiplied by dy dx. And this will be equal to, let me carry this across, equal to zero all over this, all over two times the cosine, or two times the sine of pi x is the cosine of pi y. Two times the sine of pi x plus the cosine of pi y. So then this falls away. This whole thing will go away once I divide each side by this. But um, remember, this is just 0. Because zero over that is just going to be it's still zero. Zero or anything is zero. So then that is really, I just wrote that so you can understand what I'm talking about. And here, what we're really going to um, solve for is dy dx. So I'm actually going to subtract pi times the cosine of pi x from each side. So I'm going to take away, whoa. So let me take away that. So if I take away pi times the cosine of pi x from that side, that'll cancel. And on the right side, I would have minus pi, zero minus pi times the cosine of pi x. And then all I have left on the left side is a negative pi times the sine of pi y multiplied by dy dx. And all of that will be equal to negative pi cosine of pi x. Now, all I really have to do is divide by negative pi sine of pi y. So what happens is um. If I divide each side by this, if I divide this side by this whole thing, I'll just get dy over dx. And that will be equal to negative pi times the cosine of pi x all over negative pi times the sine of pi y. And then these negative pi's cancel, and all you really have is that dy dx will be the cosine of pi y or pi, the cosine of pi x over the sine of pi y, and that will be your answer.